Amen and amen. Welcome to New Testament Christian Church here of Albuquerque's Bible study. We have a first timer with us, Brother Charles. He said, I think this is the first time I've ever been in Bible study. So I hope we do it right. Just for you. JP, you took all the plates. <laughs> He's not used to His wife didn't serve him, so he just took his plates, all the plates. Well, we're here in Bible study, and it's good to be in the house of God. And we were visiting folks, and, and I pray that uh, everyone has a great, had a great week in the house of God. I also pray that uh, God is blessed. He, he's on the move. Things are really happening. But it's up to us to remain faithful, amen? It's up to us to continue to look to him for everything that we have need of. We're continuing the book of Romans chapter 9, and uh, let's begin with prayer. Brother Jim, could you pray for our Bible study, please? Sure. Father God, thank you for this week, and thank you for the uh, Domino's Pizza. Thank you for Pastor, thank you for everything that you brought us through, and uh, thank you for uh, you bringing us through COVID, and uh, oh, giving us Jesus. your glory and your life, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen and amen. I believe we left off last week talking about the calling or the election of God, and we, we read through uh, Romans 9, 10 through 13, and how that he said, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a brief, brief recovery. <laughs> For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also was conceived by one, even our father Isaac. For the children being not born yet, neither having done good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. We understand that God didn't hate Esau, but he was just showing his preference, that God was showing that I'm God. And I'm the one who put men and women in places. You know, we think that the elections uh, that are going on in the world, they're ordained of men. But we know who's running this show. Amen. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful to know that he's in control. Amen. So we're going to pick up here in Romans 9, verse 14 through 18. 14 through 18, it reads, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? <laughs> God forbid. I love it when Paul says God forbid. It's like, that's ridiculous. Sometimes we do, we, we, get, we get our little righteousness, our own little self-righteousness. We begin to say, I, I don't think this is right. And Paul is like, slap yourself. You done lost your mind. <laughs> he said, God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared through all the earth. Therefore he hath mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Now chew on that for a few minutes. We know about this guy, Pharaoh, right? He was, he was the oppressor of God's people. But how many times did Moses go and tell him what God said? You know, a lot of times we, we want to find fault. We want to find fault with everybody else, you know. But we forget about how many times 
mercy has been extended to us. We forget about how many times God has given us a chance to turn from destruction, to turn out of the way. We, we don't have to go deeper. But when we made up our mind, God says, I'm going to show you just how evil you are. I'm going to let your heart get as hard as you want it. And he said, in fact, I'm going to aggravate you so that his heart just grew so dark. Whatever God does, it must be just. Because our God is holy, our God is righteous, and he is true. All right? Wherein the holy, happy people of God differ from other, God's grace alone makes them different. It's only the mercy of God that you and I are different from everybody else. So wait a minute, I'm the same. No, we're made the same, but we have a different spirit. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. We have a different heart and a, a different burden, a clearer understanding. While I was waiting for the food that I was picking up for the Bible study, there was a gentleman there, and he was, he was there trying to get me into a political argument. Now, I already know the fight. And he, he's a, 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 a black man, and he looked at me and said, I'm listening to your conversation. Tell me, <laughs> tell me, what's your political party? And I looked at him, I knew, I already knew he was going to cringe when I said Republican. <laughs> what? Why? You know you're black. You know, things like that, come on. But it's, it's not about that. And I told him, I said, sir, when I'm preaching, I'm not preaching for the Republicans or for the Democrats. I'm preaching for Jesus Christ. Amen. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. It's not about a party affiliation. But we get that mixed up in our mind. And we think that, you know, if you don't think like me, you're wrong. But the reality is, if you don't think like God, you're wrong. If you're not like God, See, God's grace it was changed us. It's what made us into different people, which gave us a sweet spirit. The ability to receive, come on now, receive correction and not get offended. Right. Well, you can't tell me what I'm supposed to do. You can't tell me what I can I can say what I want. You can. But all of us not pleasing the God. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody tells you, hey, that's what the word of God says. You think you're arguing with that person, but really, your argument is between you and God. All right? It's God. And this preventing the effectual, distinguishing grace, he acts as our benefactor. God literally gave us a new heart, mm -hmm. a, new, a new grace, a new spirit about us, and we can look at somebody now with compassion, whereas before we didn't even care. We were just, you know, hey, get out my way. I'm, I'm going this way or whatever, you know. But now all of a sudden we began to see, man, they, they lost just like I was. Man, they're walking in darkness just like I used to. And God, God wants them to hear the truth. And now we feel compelled to share. So me and that man, we had a good conversation. He said, you know what? You persuaded me. I'm, I'm going to come visit your church. I'm going to come visit. I'm come visit your church because I like how you were speaking. He said, I, I can tell that you're a moderate. I said, okay. I can be whatever you want me to be, but I want you to know I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. And if you love him too, we're going to have a good time. If you don't know him, let me introduce you. God knows what he's doing. God is bound no further, listen to this, no further than he has pleased himself to bind himself. God made us a promise. That's the first, as far as his uh, 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 obligation goes to us. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He said if we obey him, Jesus said I'll come and take you and we'll rule and reign with Christ. I mean, rule and reign in heaven with God, with my Father. God doesn't have to make our roads smooth and easy. 
God doesn't have to make everything just go our way. Everything's coming up roses for me. Jim, is everything coming up roses for you? You sure? No, I have the Joel Osteen of fruit trees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. He's still God. <laughs> He's still God. We have to think like that. He, he really doesn't owe us anything. And I, I'm, I'm grateful for the mercy that he's shown me. He says that he will receive and not cast out those that come to Christ. But the drawing of the souls in order to that coming and anticipating uh, this distinguishing favor to whom he will. See, some people's heart literally long for Christ. And some people, you can just look at it, they are just so against God. And you say, how did you get so hateful? How did you get so lost? But you have to understand, some people are just prone to do that. I mean, evil is all around us. We know we're living in the last days. We read the book, right? That's Brother Ken's word. I read the book, brother. What's going on? <laughs> when you read the book, you already know what's going to happen. It's those who don't know what's going to happen. They don't understand. And so, you know, <laughs> he said, who art thou? We're so foolish. We're so feeble. So unable to judge. Yet we think we can sit in judgment of God. We can't even... Take care of ourselves. We can't even judge justly. We can't, you know, we, 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 we look at all the facts and then we say, well, we got to factor in that I like him. I don't like her. And we get all personal. And, but that's not God. He is faithful and he is true. Amen. He is just. I'd rather him be my judge. Amen. I think Sister Kathleen loves me. But I still have God be my judge. Sister Tensio, she loves me. But I probably got on her nerves one or two times too. She'd be like, yeah, yeah, he's all right, but no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> hey, Amen. I'm getting there. I'm getting I'm trying to win her 100. Ratings are going. <laughs> my ratings are dropping. Oh, no. <laughs> but you know, God is not a man. He doesn't show any favoritism. He loves us. We got to do his word, do his will. Verse 19, he said, Thou wilt say unto me, I like this part. Man, I really love this chapter because Paul is just bringing out some stuff that we all sit and battle with. Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay? Are the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with long suffering the, wrestle, the, the, vessels of, the vessels of wrath fitted for this? Hmm. I got twisted. I don't know why. Y'all pray for me. That he might make known the riches of his glory, the vessels of mercy, which he hath fore prepared unto, his, unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. See, you have to understand that Paul was writing to Jews and Gentiles. The Jews had it all figured out. It's all about us. And then God began to show them, no, it's not. I used you to show the world the favor of God. 
And that message is still resonating in everybody's mind. Look at that little small country called Israel. The people of God. Ah, oh, we want to erase them off the face of the earth. And they've done everything they could, and yet they stand. That's the mercy of God. Amen. That's the favor of God. The whole world can hate you. But God says, touch not by the anointing. That's right. And that's it. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. And you think about that. How much so many people hate that nation. Oh, we can just get them out. We deserve that land. We deserve, we, we have a king there. Our God is out of there. Yet God says, I'm the God of God. I'm the king of kings. All right. And they've not been able to move them. Why? Because of the favor of God. Also, he formed vessels filled with mercy. You know, we look at some people, some people, they just have bubbling joy all the time. Every time you see them, you're like, oh, so, man, I wish I, if I could tone it down a little bit, I wish I could have some of that in me. I could just walk around this all the time. God is good. Amen. <laughs> Don't you ever have a toothache? No. I'm just so blessed. Come on. Somebody get you because because your smile looks like it even hurts. <laughs> Sometimes we just feel jealous of it. Like, ah! hey, I know it can't be like that all the time. But why not? Can't God give us that kind of joy? Life happens to everybody. Some people don't like it, but life happens to everybody. We're all going to face difficulties. We're all going to face struggles. Come on. We all had to live through 2020. We ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. Boy. Worse is yet to come. Yes. Praise your brother. But I don't plan to be here. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And my prayer is that none of us are here Amen. when God comes. When God begins to deal with the world and its sin. He said, sanctification is the preparation of the soul for glory. That's what God is doing. He's getting us ready to go be with him. He's working on us. He's working some stuff out and he's working some stuff in. He's teaching us how to worship. That's what our conference was about. How to worship God in spirit and in truth. How we worship through the Son. And how we, we lift up the name of Jesus. And when we really do that, we promote the name of Jesus. When we promote it, we, we try to draw men and women out of darkness and help them to recognize we need this. We need the truth. We need to hear the truth that we can stop hearing the lies of the devil, stop being deceived by the one who wants us to continue to walk in darkness. This is God's work. Sinners fit themselves ready for hell. We, we work out for that. That's what sinners do. That they, they, they live in sin. They work towards sin. I'm telling you, this flesh wants to go to hell. It does not want to go to heaven. It does not want to do right. We already talked about that. Chapter 7. Go back. Read it. Chapter 7. Your flesh doesn't want to do right when you know what you're supposed to do. Even after God laid it out, God gives you step. One, two, three, four. Oh, why can't I just skip to five? Is five even in here? <laughs> I told you one, two, three, four. Yeah, but I believe we should go right to five, God. Come on. Can we get to go to... And we, we sit and have this argument. That's your flesh rebelling against one who knows all. You say, how can this be? He said, thank God Jesus saved us. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank God for his mercy. <laughs> it's God's design. All whom God has, has prepared for. He says, he says, we would know that these are the vessels of mercy. We can see them who God is. I mean, you know certain people in your life that the hand of God is upon their life. 
And then you look at people and you're like, you need the hand of God. You need to know him. You need to even hear his voice. How do we make that distinction? It's just God. You can see God in them. I'm not talking about people that you say, that's a nice guy. He's really nice. People think I'm a nice guy because I try to be nice. That guy sat there. He talked to me. And he said, I said, well, would you going to invite your wife? He said, I am. He said, she's the church goer, but I, I'll come. I said, are you going to tell I'm a nice guy? He said, well, I don't know. I don't know. He said, are you nice? I said, I try to be. I really try to be nice. He said, I don't know. You know, you can look at people and say, hey, that's a nice guy. Are you a nice guy? He's a good guy. It is hard. Amen. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Davis used to say, people say, well, if you're so nice, why you don't smile? He said, I am smiling. <laughs> Y'all just can't understand. When you know him, you know that God is in him. It's not about the looks. It's not about the smile. It's about the spirit. Surely, there can can be no unrighteous in any divine dispensations. Nor in God's, come on now, in God's exercising this long-suffering patience and forbearance towards sinners. Come on, surely God could just turn their hearts around. How many ever felt like that? God just click the switch, whatever you got to Turn the switch in my heart, please. Make me into that role. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I want to be that Jesus robot so I can go to heaven. That's not what God wants. And you know, a lot of people that have been programmed to love God, they never get to know him. You know, you, you put them in church, you, you sent them to Bible school, you, you did this, you, you, you raised them in the word. But they never let God in their heart. And so when the real battle comes, when they find themselves with their backs against the wall, they don't know who to call. They didn't have a relationship. They didn't have a relationship with God. They were led to the Bible. They were told this is what you believe. They were instructed this is what you're supposed to do. But they never accepted Jesus Christ. He said that's what it takes. You have to accept this free gift from Jesus Christ. Amen. Then we'll experience the joy. Thou wilt say unto me, why? Why then is God angry with us? Who, who hasn't done his will? He's already made us. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to make it. You're going to fail. You're... You know, we can get that way. But the reality is, he's God. And we are not. He's God. Nobody else is. Woe unto him, Isaiah said, 45 and 9. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou? Or thy work? Hath, he hath no hands. Woe to him that saith to his father, What begattest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou bought forth? Could you imagine looking at your mom and say, Mom! Why wasn't I born white? Um, because me and your dad are black. The odds were against you, son. <laughs> Well, why couldn't y'all be white? I'm mad. Get over it. Well, that's what we do with God. God, I should have been a king. I should have been this. I should have been that. Why didn't you make me right? Why was I born crippled? Why was I born with this flaw, this defect? We don't have any right to say that to God. God, why was I giving this child with this, this sickness, this illness. God knows what he's doing. Things that you and I just can't even begin to understand. And, and like I said, when you, you get in this chapter, it really makes you search your heart. 
Because so often we, we can find ourselves shaking our finger at God. God, you know I can't handle this. I've had too much going on. My mom's gone. My dad's gone. And everything is falling apart around me. Give me a break. He said, how can you, who can't fix anything, look at your creator and find fault? Ooh, that's deep. It makes you look at yourself and say, I'm going to just shut my mouth. Because I don't Amen. know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we run in our mouth and we don't understand who we're talking to. We're running our mouths and we don't realize God could just turn your oxygen off right there. Tell your heart, stop. Boom. And that's it. <laughs> so Sig said then he won't have to deal with none of it he only had to hear you whine <laughs> but God does these things that he might make his glory known God really it does it begins to bring out the beauty of who he is his power his strength his mercy and his love and you I mean we look around and we see things all happening around us and we say, well, God, if there, you know, you hear people say, if there's a God, why are these things happening? Why, why is there a killing in the streets? Why are children dying? Why are people hungry? Food is everywhere. Why, why, why? We already know. Sin. It's because of sin. Well, why didn't God just wipe it all out? Now, I'm getting ready to preach tomorrow about the flood. Ooh. You got to read. Right. You got to come, 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 come. Get some. Get some. God's been dealing with me about this for about two weeks now. I'm like, God, how do I preach this? But God's been dealing with me. I said, man, if God dealt with them with the flood because of their wickedness, they must have been really bad. You think about Sodom and Gomorrah and those cities that God destroyed. They must have been horrible. Where are we? Where are right we? Here. Right there. I'm thinking if, if they were worse than us, wow. Look at our world. Look at our society. Look at how we treat one another. Black on black crime. You look at the the, uh, the cartels, how they'll just come and obliterate a city or a village and no thought. What, what, what kind of hatred did they have that God had to get rid of all of them? All I know is thank God for his mercy. That's right. Thank God for his mercy. As he said also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. He will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as I, Isaiah said, said, said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth, the Sabbath, have left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and they had been made like unto Gomorrah. Only his mercy. Amen. It's only his mercy that America is standing. It's only his mercy. Come on, look around us. How hateful, how, how many God haters. Look at this generation now that are raising their children. I, I don't want to force religion on them. Let them just figure their way out. But we don't read that in the word of God anywhere. No. God says, train up your child. 
Give them the opportunity. They don't even give their children a chance to know the truth. And you know the devil wants to give them a lie real quick. Oh, you got to you got to read the stars and you'll figure out how you're supposed to worship. Yeah, what's your what's your horoscope sign? What's your this that all this foolishness that is not of God? When the word of God says, train up a child in the way they should go. So when they get old, they won't depart from it. Ah, that was old. I'm the God, the Lord thy God, and I change it not. Oh, but this is 2021. Come on, Reverend Tessio, you're just an old fuddy daddy. You still read that old King James Version, right? I'm praying for you. <laughs> you got to get the newfangled. The way I want to hear it version of the Bible. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cutting up, but the word of God can't be changed. That's right. The truth is the truth is the truth. And we need to teach our children. We need to lift them up, get them to their place where they recognize how real God is and how desperately we need him. Because without him, we're lost. Thank God that he called us. Father, we're so grateful for this time together in your house. Lord, for an opportunity to look into your word. Grateful, oh Lord, that you brought Charles here for his first time. God, I pray that you continue to speak to his heart and mind and help him to hear your voice, Lord. I pray that you give him clarity in this Bible study. I pray for those on Facebook, God, and those joining us on Zoom, Lord, that they hear your word and rightly apply it. And more importantly, Father, that we continue to let our light shine, Amen. that others might see and come seeking you. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you is our prayer. Hey, come tomorrow. Tune in. Let's see what uh, God did after the flood. God bless you is our prayer. Amen, amen.